sure people have studied it <clears throat> for years and just have found a way to make it. Well, they say music soothes the savage soul. Soothes the savage beast. Yeah. But it probably eggs on some shit, too. So yeah. you can see those rages with skinheads. Ooh, cool. it's pro- <laughs> they have a song? <laughs> Not they have a song, but just like you do, like when they, you know, you see like groups that play certain types of music, it gets them all like riled up and shit. Yeah. And just, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, break shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Alexa, uh, please stop playing the music. We Thank you, Alexa. Great, great selection by Marcus Miller. Yeah. Great Marcus uh, Miller selection. Indeed. I am extremely fucking hungover. <laughs> you would think after all this time, your recovery skills would be a little bit better. And then uh, you'd, uh, you could, yeah. you know, I mean. Uh, um, normally, if I drink what I drink and don't drink other people's shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm okay because mm-hmm. I drink one thing, which is Tito's, the whole night. Drink it the whole night, yeah. I'm start and I don't change. But we had our level one bus ride yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, which was a huge success. It was so much fun uh, out in the Santander Arena in Pennsylvania. Uh, man, people from all over are coming to this event. Shout out to Soul Nation uh, for their promotions and um, putting this concert together, mm-hmm. which is pretty badass. Uh, R&B, uh, Little Mo. Mm-hmm. Of, I don't know who Little Mo is. Um, are you ready to do I'm coming to know where to hold you. Um, woo-woo. Same with Missy Elliott and... Mm. Yeah, you're, not familiar. You're, 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 a, you're an underground hip-hop guy, not a not commercial a, hip-hop guy. Right? Yeah, Little Mo doesn't sound... Uh, Fabulous and Little Fabulous Mo. Is, she is, did the record. Okay. She did the record with <clears throat> Ja Rule. What okay. would I be without you? Oh, okay. So that was okay. Oh, oh, she sings. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh, oh. Sorry, I'm a little hoarse. It's all right. Uh, she opened the show. She mm-hmm. was actually the replacement for Maya. Maya was supposed to um, perform. It was Maya, Joe, and Monica. Now, Maya, I know, and I, I like, love Maya. Maya's a little bird. She's a little... I loved her... Yeah. Well, I loved her voice. Yeah. I loved the song. It's a cute little song. So Maya couldn't, couldn't make it, huh? Couldn't make it. She re- replaced her... Last two weeks ago, they replaced her with... Uh, little Mo. Little Mo. Okay. Uh, which I must say, tore this fucking show up. She, nice. She, she really had an old show, and she was... You know, she's old. These are older people, older R&B artists right. that are our age, I right. guess. Uh, but like Monica, like, you know, she's since she's been 13 or 14... Yeah. And I've been, been singing. And so her songs go back 35 years, 30 some plus years. And you're like, damn. Yeah. <clears throat> Even Joe, um, um, classic uh, Renaissance man type of, you know. If I recall, though, Joe, all of Joe's shit was like the same. Every one of his songs like, all was of try to songs, take your pants off. Right, exactly. <laughs> try to take your pants off and not from him. But I'm gonna be the one. Like he's not. He yeah. like this guy. This other guy ain't the guy for you. I'm the guy for yeah. you. It's all that. All of his songs. Was yeah. All like that. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> and that's every song he sang there last night. I mean, you had chicks fucking doing the Teddy Pendergrass. They were mm. like throwing shit on stage and and, mm. and giving them the. And then talking about how you need to respect them. Yeah. 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 The hypocrisy um, comes out. Mm. Indeed. The hypocrisy comes out because Joe making them moist. He was making them moist. He really was. Uh, who who uh, who headlined? Monica was the headline. Monica she, was the headline? She closed okay. the show. Yeah. Okay. Which I thought Joe would have probably closed the show better. Just in my opinion. Just the way he right. had his rap. You know, his right. rap was like, <clears throat> hey, ladies, you know. That's kind of an interesting thing. Like, you have a guy come out to you know, get the ladies all riled up. Yeah. And then you close the show with Monica. Yeah. So, like, what's, like... That's a interesting way. To that's do an it. interesting like you're. I don't know. I mean, unless uh, me you're, you're gay, your your clit must all of a sudden like not be swollen anymore after that. Because like who's who's sealing this deal? Who's, who's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's sealing the deal? Is who's funny. like you know, funny. Yeah, is that like because if you're a guy thinking that this is gonna you know something's gonna go down, yeah. Then Monica comes out. And you're like oh. You know, she had a um, a, a, a shirt, I mean, a jacket on that 
drove me a little nuts because Uh-oh. I'm a, you know, in the clothing and mm-hmm. apparel and all of those stuff. And she had some, I think it's just her son's clothing line. I'm, I'm going to look it up, but it was weird. It was like a puff vest, you know, like a, a, a like a Patagonia vest or right. something. Mm-hmm. Upside down, stitched onto the bottom of her clothes. Like, it was weird. Upside down? Yeah, it was like an upside down vest. Like, she took the vest. And like her, somebody made this for her. Somebody made this jacket okay. for her, and took this vest and turned it upside down and and stitched it halfway on the bottom of her long coat, so that oh. the so that the puffy part was by the pockets down. Okay, you know? all right. I, I get the mm. look. I understood what she was going for. Okay, and it was an arena, so we really couldn't see you mm-hmm. know that well. We couldn't be like, you know, like gawk at it. What's it was, what song did Monica close with? Um, I don't know. I don't, okay. know. I don't, I don't, I don't even remember. Um, I think I know, but I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Sorry. I just, I just, I'm just no. curious. No, don't know. Don't know. Because um, Monica just looks the same to me. Yeah. Like the image I have of Monica is the... Very much. Very much. 18, 19 year old... She looked uh, like it. Monica. Really? She, I mean... From what again, what we saw on stage, right. she, all we saw was a lady. She looked like Ellen DeGeneres to me. Like she was blonde. To the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she looked like. Ellen. Oh, she didn't dance like Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, no. That's good. That's good. Um, but she's been around the block for a while. She's she's yeah. she's, she's been around. She's had babies with uh, 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 Jocko. Uh, Jocko. Yeah, my man Jocko from Atlanta. Um, he used to manage, uh, uh, like, uh, Future and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. a couple of rappers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when I was in Atlanta um, with Damon, you know, uh, he lived like right down the block. Him, uh, um, Will, um, the fucking producer. Damn. Will I am? No, not Will I am. No. Um, sorry, I forgot. I don't brain moment um and dj drama and all they all live like in the same area dj drama well, i guess if you make a certain amount of money and stuff like that you kind of like like you pool in the same neighborhood so to speak uh that's B- B- buckhead <clears throat> bankhead or buckhead buckhead Bank- uh yes buckhead. millionaires row they have I'm familiar with that's different that's not where 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 damon lived in no 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 I i'm just but what i'm saying is like you know usually if you're you know it's, yeah Income groups kind of like congregate together. So oh, okay. if, if people in that industry are making a certain amount of money, it, there's a good chance that they're not going to that their domicile is going to be mm. in, in relative proximity to yeah. to each other. Yeah, you know, I would assume so. I mean, make some cash. I'm gonna... yeah. Well, you're gonna live in a just you know you live in a certain area, and then you hear that one person lives in a certain area. So when it comes time for you to buy your house, mm. oh, what about this area? And so yeah, it yeah, a lot becomes of one of those things. Yeah, a lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, so that you know what a lot of people don't do? Tell me. A lot of people don't do 95 episodes of a podcast because we are on episode 95 Dot. of Two Bros uh, Podcast here with the hungover Chado and mm-hmm. the very, very uh, bright and bushy-tailed uh, Jono. Yes, he is. I will carry us forward. Don't worry about it. Thank Push God you cannot smell line. Chado's breath. It is horrible. Mm. Does it smell bad? Oh, my God. Just I love you. but um, I brushed my teeth. Um yeah, you need more. It's than in that. the bottom. It's, yeah, it's it's coming up. It's yeah, it's, it's just it's anyway. Yeah. Okay. It uh, he's told you. <laughs> thank God we have not invented smellovision yet. That's right. We're getting there. We're getting there. The scratch thing. Maybe we'll put a little, like a little scratch, like a little scratch thing, like a little decal. <laughs> you can go up to your mm. monitor. And you can. Mm. And you can. But he is right. I, I smells um, Chad liquor slash yep. old seafood. That what was the food like? <laughs> okay, my wife thinks it was horrible. Okay. <laughs> uh, she thinks everything's horrible. Um, well, your wife's a very finicky, she's a very picky, very. particular eater. Yeah, so she, it's not, it, that's not an uncommon yeah. statement. She smells all her food before she eats it, yeah. which I, I get it. I mean, I, animals do that too, you know. They smell it and, okay, it's good. I, I tend to, do you smell your food before you eat it? No. No. 
No. You eat. You I, look, I eat. You can look. You I can, eat. Yeah. You see it. But you, but you also, you and I also do a lot of cooking. <clears throat> yes. So we all, like, we go through the process of it, and we Correct. know what it looks like. It, well, you know what it smells like. Right. We know what it tastes what like. What's made so, of. What's in right, it. Right. And we know that in stages. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when we present it, when it's there, mm. there's no question as there's to no what question, no the, the thing is. Yeah. That's, so, that's, that's different. Yeah. So I think that's where she um, just makes herself picky and... Mm-hmm. The more you think about it, I guess you go, "What's in this?" Or yeah, you, yeah, what, yeah. Oh well, ooh. start asking questions, and and I didn't realize what you just said. Yes, because you don't make it, right? So you don't cook, or you don't. You have no idea. You. That's weird. To to not. To oh, not, to not to not know. Uh, yeah, yeah. To not know ingredients, right? But eat and then question everything. Like, yeah. Oh, what's in this? What's this? Nutmeg, you know. <laughs> Which I like that little Geico commercial with the the um, gecko. Uh-huh. Gecko brings the cookies. Oh, his yeah. Mother's recipe, and the guy takes the whole plate and eats the whole eats thing. Eats the whole thing. <laughs> What's that? Nutmeg. What's that? Nutmeg. It's a secret recipe. Uh, no, it's nutmeg, right? It's a secret recipe. <laughs> you can tell me. Come on. It's, it's a secret. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, must be not big. Um, well, yeah, glad you made it back. I, I thank you, and um, um, we had such a good time on the bus. Uh, I gave away some prizes, um, some raffles. Uh, so what we do is we we raffle, we do raffles to give the bus driver a tip. Right. Yeah. You you were you were telling yeah. that, uh, before. So so this is better than just bringing around a hat and you know, mm-hmm. getting a dollar for the driver, dollar, dollar you know, fifty people on a bus gets 50 bucks we brought some cool prizes out so normally i a fire stick mm-hmm. you know loaded with some goodies on it um an amazon echo we gave away and i gave away a atari gift set okay which would had 150 built-in games that which sounds I awesome damn sure one to keep for myself uh-huh. it's like please hope my wife wins it um and that, and then we wound up giving fifty bucks away, you know, cash because we had mm-hmm. made so much money. We were going to give the driver a hundred bucks, and uh, it's all fun, you know. It's, yeah, the same driver going back and forth. No, actually, okay. we switched, so we had to s- split the fee and give one driver fifty and okay. him give give the other fifty, which we would have loved to give to the one guy, but the rule is eight hours. Okay. Um, yeah, we had a good time and um, played some, you know, movies and music on the way, but it was just so. The bus ride was so fucked. Everybody was dead. And yeah. By midnight, we leave the concert. Two hours, three and a three hours to get back. So we got in about three thirty four this mm. morning. Yes. Bright eye and bushy tail. Um, fun, fun mm-hmm. all fun, all fun. Uh, a lot of people were there for the whole weekend. You know, these trips, they're either you could do the whole weekend, right, and or hang out, night, yeah. or just do a one day. We did a day trip because it was cheaper. It was only a buck fifty. And uh, you didn't have to commit to anything. You know, 400 bucks is a lot for people. But there were people from everywhere, like Maryland, uh, right. Virginia, D.C. On coming. your bus? No. Oh, okay. On, 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 at on, the, on the trip. Yeah, okay, there were nine right. buses total, people from all over coming to this event. Which I give it to them. It's very smart to mm-hmm. just market this thing, you know, across the country. And right. then east of Seaboard, at least. Mm-hmm. And then you get people from Philly, DC, and then right. they come up. You know, they're out of their element and they have a good time. Right. So it was it was fun. It was definitely fun. It was definitely fun. Uh, shout out again, like I said, Soul Nation. We'll be doing a little bit more <coughs> events with them. With Soul a, Nation. We have a crab Soul. fest coming up. Oh um, shit! You niggas and crabs. Yeah, crabs in a barrel, baby. <laughs> <laughs> they do like. They, they, yeah. So how about you? How was your week? Yeah. My week was relatively low key. Yeah, you know, relatively low key. Nothing. Did, this weekend's gonna be a tax weekend. Mm. Getting them taxes ready. Yeah, you said that. Got to get. Uh, make sure Uncle Sam gets his. Mm-hmm. Don't give him too much. Give him Did too you much. You gotta do say, the yeah, move. You you were trying to move your friend or cousin or niece or nephew or what, what was it? What you were moving someone? Oh no, uh, um, my uh, wife's sister. She was she was. She, she yeah she's all moved she's all she's all settling okay, in. all done she's all settling all ready to all ready to go it could have it could have happened uh, a lot uh, easier uh, and smoother. yeah it could have been easier but you know hey whatever mm. it's done now she's in there she's uh 
shopping for furniture mm-hmm. and whatnot. And how about the uh, NFL um, new rules and regulations and new proposed season? What do you think of this? I don't know of any. I mean, I know they exist. I haven't really been paying attention. The 17 game rule? Did the NFL? New... Yeah. Well, they haven't agreed upon it yet. No, no, I said proposed. Oh, proposed. What do you think about it? Seven, you know, 17 games, it's gonna, you're going to have to get the Players Association to agree. And mm-hmm. so, you know, players don't want to play in the 17th game, you know, because this shit hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. So, you know, you're taxing my body again. It's, it's not, okay. you know, yeah. so I, guys don't want that. So guys are going to want to make sure, hey, okay, so that means we get a bigger share of the revenue, right? Yeah. Right? That means we can... Uh, you know, I think there's been uh, talk about uh, increasing the roster size mm-hmm. of, uh, of NFL, uh, well, NFL teams. Well, you mentioned this the other day, and you said if you add five more players or something, mm-hmm. or maybe, you know, you, you want an extra game, you got to give us more staff, or you have to give us more people. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that, I mean, to me, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, the, 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 to me, it makes sense. If, if, if you're going to ask them to do more, then you got to give them more mm. to, uh, to, to do it with. And so. A lot of, lot you know, of, it's a business. It is. You know, it's a business. People forget it's a business, and people get. And for some reason, like when they when these things happen, people like get on players. Yeah. Like they say, players are greedy, which I don't get. I, I don't get how working people would look at a player and say that the player is greedy. Mm. Because all the player is doing is 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 trying to make sure that that playing the game they they get their fair share. And people think that your majority of players are multimillionaires. But that's not the case. Yes. The majority of players are not guys who make millions of dollars. The majority of players are going to be there for like maybe three, four years mm. and make a few hundred grand a year. Mm. So, you know, you try to make sure that those guys are okay. You know, and, and, and you know, the multimillionaire, you know, you can't, you can't separate the two so it all comes under the same, mm. same roof. But it just, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I've always wondered why people like say like players are, are greedy. But mm. you're trying to get... You, you're trying to get what you what you feel you deserve, and that's that's Tough to, part of negotiating. You do the same thing when you at work when you go to work and you say, "Hey, I'm worth this," and they say, "No, you're worth that," mm-hmm. and then you go through this process of, and then you come to an agreement. Right? It's not, it's not you. Or being, you don't take the job. Or you don't take the job. Right? It's not you being greedy. It's mm-hmm. like you saying, "No, this is what I think my fair Wages. market is because I do X, Y, Z, and you have to prove it and all that mm-hmm. shit like that." Well, in most cases, I mean, that's where unions come in. And, and help you sh- show you the value of the work. They they, yeah. they assess the work and say, a, a truck driver on this route should be making X. Right. <clears throat> or a worker, you know, in this field, this is your profession. But tough to um, live your life on 16 paychecks. You know, you only, yeah. The, the NFL guys, 16 games. Mm-hmm. You only get a check per game. Uh Okay. I don't know how guys get paid. I don't, I don't no, know. They, get a, they get one check, one per, check game. per game. Okay. <coughs> and after 16, it's over. You know, you get mm-hmm. 16 paychecks for the year, you know. But most people work a 52-week, you get half of that. You right. You get 20, 26. 26 checks, right? Mm-hmm. So 10 less, I guess. I mean, 10 less checks. 10 checks less a little bit bigger, normal. but, you know, who knows? Yeah, checks are a you little know? bit bigger. But, uh, yeah. But if you don't pace yourself, you will find yourself... No, and that's uh, <laughs> that's the sad. Yeah, that's the sad part. The mm-hmm. Sad part is a lot of guys don't do a good job in uh, in uh, managing mm. their their finances. Even even if they don't make a lot of money, you know, a ton mm-hmm. of money. If you you know if you're one of those guys who make you know 100, 150 grand or something like that, you're still you're still doing better than a lot of people. You still got to manage that money. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I like the Herm Edwards uh, school of you know uh, he does a class on uh, teaching yeah. MBA. And and the pro players, mm-hmm. how to spend their money yeah. and what to, and there was they showed the uh, it was in the broke uh, thirty for thirty right, mm-hmm. and he shows the guy and he's like look sleep there was a guy sleeping in the class and mm-hmm. he was like sleep in this class wake up broke you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like he said he told you, that guy right there is gonna be broke because he's sleeping while I'm trying to teach you something right. And you f- it was a rookie. It's like coming into the before they come into the NBA, uh, right. pre um, uh, uh, NFL. NFL mm-hmm. I'm sorry, pre um, uh, uh, pro. Right. And he's like, you don't need Pookie and Ray Ray's restaurant ideas. Yeah, man. Uh, 
You get tons Jojo. of you get tons of friends when you when you Jojo's get... <laughs> got a barber shop. Um, you don't need to buy your mom <clears throat> a fucking mansion because the bills in a mansion cost more than the house. More than the house, exactly. So think about the bills later. You know, you're gonna give your mother a six million dollar house. The bills that come with that. You know, yeah. You have to over the due. course of a lot, right? Over the right. Course of so, who's is, gonna pay the right. the bills and the taxes and the, the right. so think about that. And you got to put those people in check too, because if those if those people are coming out the projects too, those people you hooking up, they can't manage money either. Right. So right. you know, you decide you want to drop somebody a hundred fifty grand, yeah, on their idea, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, two months later, they're like, "Yo, man, they was." They, they tripping over there, man. They just, I can't get this. <laughs> you hear that shit? You know? They never gonna give us a chance, man. <laughs> That's right. There's always the man. You know. I said what? Man. I gave you a hundred. That was the biggest. Um, I remember watching this interview. This was a long time ago with uh, Jay Z mm. when he was talking about his beef with Benny Siegel. Mm. And uh, he's like, "Dude, I gave you a record company and a clothing line. Yeah. What the fuck else you want? Right. <laughs> you know." This is true. I don't know what else. What else do you want? And now you're gonna badmouth me and say that I'm said, no. I gave you a record label and a clothing line for you to do you. Do you think? Do, do you your thing? You know, stay proper. You want to do it? Stay proper. But uh, hey, yeah, he, he fucked up a good thing. He he fucked up a really good cash cow. Uh, they have they be yeah. like, state property was dope. I mean, they had they had a lot of talent. They had a a ton of artists coming. Mm-hmm. Through their pipeline, um, PD Crack and and uh, Oskino and Spark, yeah, those uh, Young Guns and they they were dope, man. But they just like you said, <laughs> I gave you all this, <laughs> and you want to say I I I shit it on y'all, and, right, and, right, right, right. Yeah, that's that's fucked up. Yeah, which goes to show you that that the 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 dude that runs it is uh is not a uh, he's a different guy. Like the dude that can run those things, and yeah. and that's a that's not that's not for everybody. Everybody can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we like right. to think everybody can do that. We like to think that we can do it if we would, uh, but you know, if we were to find ourselves in that position, we would need a lot of help. Of course, uh, it's like um, it's like in um sports and and uh, also with, uh, I tell like a lot of these hoteliers, I said just because you stay in hotels don't mean you can yeah. own one. Yeah. Just because you watch basketball yeah. don't mean you could play. Yeah. Or coach or any of it. It's easy to watch. Oh, it's, it's easy, easy to, easiest it, thing in the world. It's easy to be a customer. Mm-hmm. But to own it, sell it, deliver it, buy, turn it around and make profit on it, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard. It's really hard. Really hard to, to run any business or any, you know, thing that has some purpose. In yeah. It. It's easy to loaf and just fucking... Fuck you, here's my money. You know. Well, yeah, yeah. I paid. You know. Yeah. I yeah. think restaurants are the biggest one. Like everybody thinks that they can oh, everybody thinks they can run a restaurant. Yeah. You know, I've been coming to this bar for fifteen years. I could, could you just uh, Yeah, no, it's a diff- different different yeah. when you're on the other side of the bar. When you when you go in the back and you look at the chiller and mm-hmm. the, 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 the 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 pipes and the yep. shit is fucked up and what do I do? Who yep. do I call? Well, we would call you. <laughs> so you better figure this shit out. You're the owner. That's it. You went to buy a restaurant. Um, <laughs> so you know, chillers and coolers. Uh, fan coil Dan. Shout out to fan coil Dan. Uh, fan coil Dan. <laughs> fan coil Dan. I call him that. He doesn't even know why I say it, but he sells fan coils. Like he's okay, a, he's a fan coil chiller uh, motor guy. Mm-hmm. Like for HVAC, so okay, which is heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Mm-hmm. And he's a big. Uh, it's very technical. Like, mm-hmm. he knows compressors, flux capacitors, and all this other bullshit. Well, Fan Coil Dan was on the train with me the other day, which I never knew he took the uh, Long Beach line or whatever else. I never seen... You know, you see the same people? Yeah, usually. A lot. Yeah. You see a lot of them, and you Just go... recognize the same faces and whatnot. And you're like, you take this? I didn't know. Uh, and I thought maybe because I was just sitting at the front by happenstance, you know, mm-hmm. by proximity. I just got on. was at the front of the train versus... And uh, he was like, oh, I, I don't know. I said, no, I met you with Billy Madden at the uh, Gabby O'Hara's at the bar and mm-hmm. whatever. He goes, oh, okay. Yeah, now I remember you. Uh, you're the hotel guy. You know? mm-hmm. 
then we short talking and I said, Well, I didn't know you took this line, but uh oh, okay, cool. And that was it. It was kinda right. like I'm in my zone. I was watching my um the hunters uh, mm-hmm. uh on my phone and I kinda like dozed off and fell asleep and you kinda know when you you know When you're getting ready for your stop. Yeah, uh, you'd hope to. Yeah. Depends well, on how much you, you well, Yes. Depends on how many you've had. And Fan Coil Dan <laughs> had too many. Oh shit. <laughs> he missed the stop. He fucking jumps up after the doors are closing mm-hmm. from Jamaica mm-hmm. and going to Long Beach. This is a Long Beach train. Okay. So I got on a train that was a straight shot for me, no transfer. <clears throat> right. Fan called Dan decides to get on a train that well, had, he, had the he had the transfer. But Fan called Dan fell asleep, fell asleep from his elixir and woke up belligerent and shit. Belligerent? He, what belligerent? He just kept fuck. What the fuck? Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> now, Fan Coil Dan is so fucking. Uh, he's one of those. Uh, ooh, what's the guy's name? Um, what's the guy that played? Uh, 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 not Jaws, but uh, who guy that played a casino? Um, Joe Pesci. No, Wood, James Wood. James Wood. You know okay. the actor. You know. Yes. Visualize. James Woods. Yes. 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 F- creased face like a. He got a tons of. <laughs> Where do you get all these folds from? Like someone just folded Hold your his, face up. Folded your skin. <laughs> he, that's Fan Cordell. Fan Cordell has this fucking uh, face that's just creased everywhere. He's got a, mm. he's got the lines here. Mm. He's got them in his cheeks. He's got everywhere. He's made a a a a. There's a crease every time for every expression in there. <laughs> yeah, expression. That's yeah. right. Every expression he's ever made. If he there's smooth, a fold for it. If he smoothed out his face, he could make a jacket. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah, he'd be leather. He'd be, he'd, he, but he just looks like a fucker, and he's fucked up. His mm-hmm. teeth are all fucked up. He's Ooh. he's he's a drunk. He's a drunk. He's a, I don't know how he is. Jesus. I mean, he's very good at his job because he's tech. He knows the shit like yeah. the back of his hand. Yeah. And when he was talking to me, it was all flux capacitor. Mm-hmm. It was all. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking mm-hmm. about, dude. I, I I hire the people that get that's right. what you do. Right. Good. That secures your job, it cements yeah. you in your world. You know, you have, you know your you know your shit. So well, he got up, and boy was he uh, pissed. So he's yelling at the fucking ticket guy. Do you know the mm-hmm. tickets, tickets, tickets? He said, "Well, if you'd have fucking asked me for a ticket before I got to the station that I don't have a ticket for, I would you would have at least known <laughs> that I'm not going to fucking Rosedale. I'm not going." to... So it's his fault. It's not fan called Dan's fault that he fell asleep. It's the ticket guy's and, fault. And the ticket, the, uh, what do you call those guys? Condu- Con- 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 conductor. Uh, conductor. Then, uh, it's not the conductor, but, you know. Yeah, he's not he driving said. the train. He took it, he said, yeah, it's my fault. He just Ooh. ate it. He ate it. He said, yeah, it's my fault. Sorry. Ticket, please. <laughs> ticket, please. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. What a great attitude. Yeah, that's a great attitude. This man squashed said, it. So, yep, you know what? Yep, that's right. It's my fault. It's 100%. Yeah, <laughs> he said 100%. 100% my fault. Ticket. Mm-hmm. And then these guys said, well, I don't have a fucking ticket. I got to go back. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to get off at here, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Go back to Jamaica and then catch your train to Babylon. He was going yeah. to Babylon. Ticket. <laughs> Boy was fan coiled Dan upset, and he kept looking at me like, fuck, you sitting right behind me. Like, I was behind him. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, once I zoned out and, oh, how you doing, blah, 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 yeah. shake, shake. That's no, it. you do your own thing. I, I did my own zone. I'm, I got my, I got, as long as I have a, a battery mm-hmm. life on my phone. Yeah, you zone and, out. And I zone out. I'm, I got my movies, and I'm I'm chilling. Or listening to something. Listening you to Two Bros yeah, exactly. podcasts or something else. It ain't, your, it ain't your job to worry about other people's stops. You just make sure you got your stop right. Unless you're the other side of the coin and, and you think someone should help you. Because I've been there, too. <laughs> but you ask a question. Yes. You don't, you don't demand, say, hey, you've seen me get off here before. How come you didn't? That, that was him. <laughs> that, that was Frank that's, Cordell. That's bullshit. He just believed that everyone... <clears throat> Now that you mention it, that that did happen on the uh, when I was heading home uh, one day. Got on the tr- got on the train, mm-hmm. uh, 
somebody said, uh, hey, is this the train? I can't remember where they were going. Is this yeah. the train to so-and-so? And none of us knew. We said, oh, that doesn't sound familiar. No, I don't think so. And he said, uh, so you guys don't know where this train's going? And this one guy said, no, I know where my stop is. And that's what I'm supposed to know. My stop. That's it. That's the only stop I care about. Mine. You need to take that attitude somewhere. You need yeah. to worry about your stuff. Look at the map. You right. Can... Look at the map. Or ask a conductor. Or, or, or just somebody just somebody with official hats on. That, that, that... Or read the fucking sign that's, that's over there on the shit. But well, how'd you get here? How'd you, how'd you get that's here? That's my next question. It's like, well, you knew to be here. Right. So somehow, like, you stopped getting information. <laughs> right. Like, you figured you had enough information. <laughs> So, okay, this is, I, I don't need to know anything. I got to know. Long Island Railroad? Okay. Once that's I get it. to Long Island Railroad, I'll figure it out it. from there. That, a lot of people do that. Yeah. A lot of people get just enough to get them to the place where to they the think mean, they need to be, to the, big to the hub. hub, and then they, and they say they, they think they can out. figure it out. Eh, well, Good luck. Good luck. It can be confusing. Yeah. You know, it can be confusing. Like, you, you, always, you always catch those, uh, um, those people who are, who are heading to the air train. Yeah. And uh, they get, they're a little confused and whatnot, yeah. and then they run into the hustlers and stuff, and they stop and talk to them. Yeah, and then you just want to say, look, 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 don't, 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 don't talk to them. Just keep, right. just keep walking keep over there. Yeah, bagels are that way. Yes, uh, it, yes, it happens often. Um, people just, you know, when you tell them, hey, take the air train, and it's not easy. It's not a one, and you think there would be more ambassadors out with some to people. That yeah. Are, New York doesn't do a good job of... of the, New York uses its people to be ambassadors. Yes. Other cities I go to have people. They have people yes. there. And, and other cities do have a... It's, it's easier to get from the either the train station or the airport into the main portion the downtown, city, wherever downtown you want to go. City, it's, yeah. it's just easier to do. Yeah, than it is here in New York. That, that, that's one thing that we don't do well. We don't get you from. Nobody comes in here. N- nobody arrives at the JFK air train to go to fucking Rosedale. Sorry, right. that just that doesn't happen. They're right. going in. They're more likely going into Manhattan. Yeah, and so we do a bad job of getting them into into Manhattan without going through yeah. a, a few hoops. It should be. Just, it, should, it could be an easier thing. Yeah, it <clears throat> it is. It is a tough uh, sell. And um, and then if you go if you go to LaGuardia, well, oh, forget it. Just forget it. It's just you need a ride. You yeah you yeah yeah. You need a ride, or you're paying for a fifty dollar cab ride, mm. or forty dollar Uber, or those fake Ubers that you know say oh, 90 bucks. A uh, black car. Yeah. Seven 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 one eight hundred seven seven. Um, car Carmel. 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 Yeah. Carmel. Is one they they're pretty cheap though. They're, oh, they're, oh, you're talking about the private car the, companies, the okay. private car, the black cars. But they they have like an uh, uh like an Uber app. They they've updated their uh, technology mm-hmm. to have a Carmel app, which is like Uber. You can do okay. it, you can do it just like Uber. Okay, but it's just their cars, you know. Okay, which is which is smart. That's good. That's smart. I would do that yeah. if everyone's on this technology wave and you want to just you know, pull it up and oh, here's my car. But New York, I mean, New York like changes their laws all the time, and they just like they, they yeah. kind of like make it hard for you if you, like if 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 you had a suite of like maybe four or five cars mm-hmm. and some drivers, and you wanted to do airport runs, yeah, you know, and and make and you could make yourself some good money yeah, that's doing a, that. A couple could, friends of mine have, you know, yeah, tried it, and... but th- like New York like gets in the way of you just trying to make some fucking money, yeah. And just did you have this license? Did you pay this board? Did you do this fee? Did yeah. you get this inspection over here? No, that's not, that inspection's not good enough. And you're out of pocket like ten grand before you even fucking make a dollar. Yeah, doing your damn doing your damn business. Uh, what's the uh, the thing for the tax medallion? Medallions. Medallions. Yeah. You go to get a medallion, or it's expensive. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Man. It's a lot of money. They just get in the way of you trying to make a fucking buck. Like you got to like. Lord Cuomo. That's uh, look. Everybody says it. It's it's like it's it's that that's a bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. Like I'm getting in your pocket first before mm. uh, you can start making something uh, on your own. That's why people are leaving New York. Yeah, yeah. true indeed. Um, uh, <clears throat> speaking of uh, New York, remember uh, Larry Sharp when we yeah. met him and talked mm-hmm. to him. He talked about a lot of plans to do certain things, and uh, one of his. Uh, uh, 
if I remember correctly, he was trying to um, <clears throat> bring more business to the Erie Canal. So he said it was a, 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 a treasure of New York that is not appreciated enough, and if more commerce came there, it would make it... Uh, well, he, he, he was using that as an example as how you can... Um, uh, 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 bring bring business and yeah, yeah and like name the ports, name the docks and yeah. and stuff like that. Give them licensing rights and yes. stuff like that. And you know, and then it's then it's your job, Verizon, to you know make sure this place yeah. looks respectable and all that stuff like that. And it's yes. happening. It's, uh, <clears throat> oddly enough, it's happening. Uh, and <clears throat> I just saw um, a uh, a plan. Uh, we get these RFPs, requests mm-hmm. for proposals to do um, projects along all in New York, mm-hmm. and I'm subscribed to New York State's um, procurement project process. <clears throat> and I saw a thing for the Erie Canal re, um, um, redevelopment. Okay. And there's 16 what they call ports or locks. Or right. They call them locks mm-hmm. or whatever. So, and each one of them is... So the city owns it. Right. I mean, the, I mean the state owns it. New York State owns this property mm-hmm. and now they're selling it to private de- developers okay. to raise you know to build on it buy on it right. and improve the area right and make it beautiful and make markets and well, stores good. and all that stuff but that was his idea i mean well i don't know if it was his own i mean it was the first time i ever heard of it right. it was larry sharp talking about uh, building those things. Well, he also didn't understand why we can't do that. Why can't we do that with bridges? Why can't we do that with tunnels? Why can't yeah. we do that with 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 the train? Why why can't we do that with the train? Why can't you know why, why can't we uh, uh, lease it out? You know, between midnight and five o'clock. Uh, you know, mm. this is the you know Google line, mm. and now we can run freight through those uh, uh, between uh, the, uh, in, uh, in those underground. hours and mm. underground and stuff like that. So why, uh, yeah. you know. So why can't we do that? That's how that's how big business can help uh, yeah. help the city. So there's been talk of uh, Andrew Yang, uh, mm. speculation that he would be interested in running for uh, mayor mm. of New York after his uh, now that he's dropped out of the presidential, presidential uh, race. race. Mm. You know, because he's still a New Yorker, so he's yes, yeah. out in Queens, I think. Well, I think yeah. I mean, shit, you get to that level. I mean, I don't. I don't know enough about his policies and what he does, but mm-hmm. I know he was, was a controller, right? Or he was he was a money guy. He was. A... Uh no, he's a he's a he's an entrepreneur. Oh no, he he's an entrepreneur. The the big idea he floated was the idea of the universal basic income. Yes. Or the freedom dividend, in which he in which he called it. Yeah, but he's not in politics now. He's no, not he's in... not in politics. Oh, whatsoever. I didn't know. That. I thought he was a, a controller. I no. thought he was the controller. No, he didn't do. He hasn't done really? anything in 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 politics. Oh, okay. He was an employee of the city. No, no. Entrepreneur builds programs, hires people, starts mm. businesses, mm. funds businesses, that mm. type of thing. Mm. Uh, would you vote for him? Would you vote for him? I would have. Yeah, I would have. I would have considered. No, if he it. goes mayor. I mean, if he, if goes, he goes mayor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when you consider the alternative, which know. is, but I'm a but I'm a resident in Nassau County, so I wouldn't. I yeah, wouldn't me be voting too, as well in that thing. But I mean, if what? So you want to do De Blasio again? Well, Kenny, I thought he's done. He is he? Years. This is his second term, no? I, I don't know. That's oh, is he going to do, uh, do, do a Bloomberg? Bloomberg. Get, do it again? Do it again? Boy, he's sucking in the polls. He he looks like, with all that money, you just can't buy it. He can't, yeah, he can't buy it. And he's getting, uh, I mean, he's got, I guess he's getting some momentum, but all of his momentum is coming from, like, I don't know where this idea that Bloomberg is great, like, festered. Yeah, like why everybody is saying yeah, Bloomberg did this and Bloom. Nah, no. <laughs> that's just strictly oh, monetary. It from? I think it's mon- monetary. I think they look at it like, wow, he's got a billion dollar company. He must be successful. Yeah, he must be okay. He must yeah. know how to run shit. Yeah, yeah, or step in shit, or have you know, yeah. you know, have your fair strike of the hand at the uh, the stock market or whatever it is. He said when I when he was mayor, I I saw him as a very very practical. Like, he made practical financial decisions, yeah. which, uh, you know, and every time you do that, you know, you piss a bunch of people off, you know, whatever. But then he always seemed to favor with, like, developers over yeah. communities. Mm. You know, so it didn't matter what this community was doing. Mm. If a developer wanted it, well, he, he was going to figure out a way to, like, help that developer okay. do it. Mm. So that's, that, you know, that's my perception of Bloomberg. And, of course, stop and frisk. 
is 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 number one on his is, uh, for me it's like report it's, card. yeah it's it's like you know and then he says yeah well we tried to stop it and was no you didn't knock it off just like uh, like when <laughs> like we realized it was bad when did you realize it was bad when you were no longer mayor yeah you know mm. I will tell you that um, stop and frisk is so horrible when you're on the other side when you've Absolutely. been pulled over. For no reason, or you've been, I've had, you know, hanging out and mm-hmm. the jump out boys come out and they just boom, 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 lift yeah. your shirts, pull your clothes out, look in your drawers, you know, and all right. this other shit, to pat your dick, and, and you got guns, you got guns. Uh, see, we don't, we don't care you guys smoking weed, we just, and that's we just the, want, we just looking for guns. And that's the thing, like, if, <clears throat> if, like, I can understand if even there's like, if, if something happened, yeah. To which you need to crack down in a particular area of a particular person. Mm-hmm. You look like so and so, or something just happened around the corner. Yeah. Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Then you know, unfortunately, I mean, like it, it sucks to be that dude, but then at least there's something tangible that that they can say. Hey, look, we just got call of a of a burglary around there. It was a dude wearing a black knit hat and a black hoodie that said level one. Well, guess what? You got a black hoodie. That says level Tag, one. I'm talking. I'm talking to you, and yeah. I'm patting you down. Not just like a couple dudes sitting on. I mean, how many times do we read about a dude like sitting on his own property? And all of a sudden, the cop, like, get up! What you got? What you got over there? What the fuck is this? <laughs> get you that know? fucking cigarette. Out and <laughs> it, it it brings up something. You know, it brings up a thing that I've always asked. It's like if you're on your property, mm-hmm. right? And a police officer just decides that they're going to come on to your property mm-hmm. to accost you. Don't you have a right to protect your property? So yeah. if you decided that you needed to pull out a gun yeah. to protect yourself. You're defending yourself. Don't you? I mean, isn't that what the, we say the Second Amendment is for? Yeah. It's to protect you against from, from tyranny, tyranny from the government? Yes. The government's the cops. So if that cop comes on your property talking about, hey, open this door, and then, then you know, and you don't have a legal right to do mm-hmm. it, and you decide to pull out your gun against that cop, you know, is the NRA going to come and and, and no. say no? Yeah, yeah. Or in Whitfield, he had a right to defend his property and no. protect his family. You should have listened to the police. Well, they yeah, they're exactly. going to tell and you to be subservient and obey the law and find out what's going on. And right. of course, the unfortunate shoot first, ask questions later. There you go. Happen. It, it it runs. Pow, 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 pow. What's your name? Yeah. <laughs> Game controller. You got a fucking yeah. Sega Genesis in your hand, yeah. and you playing video games and they beating. Be- but that story is is happened over and over, and it doesn't over make and it right, again. and it never gets corrected. Uh, no, it doesn't. I, I saw this thing with um, it was on Steve Harvey's show. Mm. Uh, it's like a clip I saw on like a Facebook feed or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened was. Um, there was this black guy that was walking around with uh, uh, two white kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, somebody saw this, thought it was wrong, and called the cops. That's it. Thought it was wrong. Yeah, just didn't understand. Why, why is this black guy with these two white kids? Mm. You know, it turns out this black guy was like, he was like known in his neighborhood. He was like a community leader in the neighborhood. Yep. Everybody, you know, had... A tremendous amount of respect for this guy. He was mentoring one of the kids. Okay. You know, all the families loved him. Yeah. You know. So, so he dealt with that bullshit and stuff like that. And then he made this statement. He says, I hope what happens now is that there is an understanding as to how how divided we can be. It's not, mm. you know, me as a black man being upset that the cops stopped me is one thing. Right. But you, white person... Right. You need to you need to understand that that is that that is a reality. Yeah, and until you understand that that is a reality, there's always going to be this divide. Mm. You know, because now this family got brought into it. <clears throat> they got brought into it, and they started. People were asking them questions, and they were like, "Well, yeah, he's he mentors our kids. He's our guy. So he's, yeah, he's our friend. Yeah. He's, he's yes, mm. we know he's supposed to be there. Why mm. you ask? Why did you stop him? And what inclination did you? What what, what yeah. made it wrong? And what you? made it wrong? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. What so you saw him there. beating these kids yeah. or whatever? No. Oh, so they were walking across walking. the street. Ooh. Ooh, how dare he? How dare? Doesn't he, he know that this? You know, this isn't. You know, it's not Emmett Till. In in my neighborhood here, uh, there is obviously a huge population of nannies. Mm-hmm. You know, we have uh, tons of nannies, and every every mm-hmm. house has their nanny. And, 
<clears throat> uh, my my is Israel uh, neighbors procreate at a high rate. They have tons of kids. Every house, if you've noticed, yeah. there's a stroller. Three, in front. four kids. In the yeah, there's three strollers in mm-hmm. the driveway, like the cars. You mm-hmm. fuck. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? They're rebuilding Israel, literally. <laughs> and um, all the nannies, of course, are you know either Caribbean or Caribbean, Jamaican, Jamaican, Haitian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they they hang. You know, I'm a corner house, so they they all wait for the buses at the morning. Mm. They all corral them. I could sell coffee there. Put a coffee cart and make them. Oh, that's probably a good a idea. Bunch of money. Yeah. Put a little coffee truck up there. <laughs> Just it's right at the bus stop. Yeah. A dollar. Yeah. I mean, you make at least five, six bucks because yeah. it's like an hour's worth of corralling. Ooh. I say this to say that um, exactly what you just said is th- like it's normal, right? It mm-hmm. becomes normal. So when you see, um, when you see that, you don't. Everybody goes, "Oh, they must be the nanny," you know. You right. See? So <clears throat> the lady, one of the nannies mm-hmm. who corrals at my house. Yeah, she asked me, she said, oh, you, are you their dog walker? Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. How big is the hole in your tongue that you, that you bit yourself I just from lashing out? I said, I said, who? She said, the, the, the people who live here. I said, I live here. And she said, oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and I could have just smashed an egg on her head. Like, Probably, yes. Yeah. And she was like, oh, I, I thought you was the dog walker. Yeah, I thought you sure, sure you did. You got your green card? What the fuck? Should I, should I call ice on you? But this is the <laughs> crab in the barrel. Yes. And she was She was like, and she was angry. She seemed like she was very angry. Angry at herself? Uh, or angry at you? Maybe at me. I don't know. She had a scowl, a, 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 a scowl on her oh. face of... So you wanted these uppity. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you uh, walk your own dog. Yes. You, uh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking that's... walk this guy. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Go for it. Go. And I was I was perplexed. I was super perplexed looking at her like, damn. How, uh, who's I, is that fucked up for me or you? Which one? It's yeah, more it's you than those, it's more right. you than me. Right. Yeah. Well, but it must I, be, because like it started off with an inference. Yeah. So rather than it being good morning. Yeah. You know, and that's what I said. You know, how are you? Good morning. I led. Kind of cold with, today. Or, I you know. led with good morning. Right. And she was like, "Oh, I, uh, she said, oh, um, uh, you, you, you walk their, you walk all their dogs." And I'm, I'm saying, like, who's, who's they? <laughs> who's, who's they? And how many fuck? I got and one where are these? Dog. And where are these other dogs at? Right. <laughs> where, 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 you mean you saw more dogs in my house <laughs> that, than this fucking guy? Cause he's here every day, sleeps in my fucking bed. <laughs> I I was so confused of like, and I just thought that, and she was somebody that was kind of like new to the neighborhood. Like mm. I'd never seen her before. So in other words, blackface she, means you're in servitude. You're you're yes. You're in her head in service of yeah. Her. I'm servicing someone yeah. here. Which yeah. which which house do you work for? Yeah. I work at sixty three. Oh no, I'm seventy seven. Mm-hmm. I'm they, that's how they do it. And I'm like, huh? Okay. Whatever. And some of them, you see them, they come in the mornings. Uh, they're all brown and, and Latino, you know, uh, or they're either Spanish or African. Like that scene in uh, the movie Claudine, where the ladies are taking the bus in the yes. morning. And they yes. drop off and they're all yes. going to the Oh, yeah. This is, this, is, yeah. this is my town in yeah. the morning. <clears throat> and um, they, yeah, it's, it, it's like that. And, and it's... <clears throat> I don't know if it's weird or it's just like, I think it's weird, more weird than it is creepy. Like I, I just look at it and go, "Damn, it's a shame," you know. Like, but then it's a job, right? So you know, yeah, it's work. So I wrestle with that too because yeah. it, you know, I work on the east side. So yeah. if I get there early enough, you know, if I come in a little bit early, you know, I might hit the, the coffee shop before I go mm-hmm. to work. You know, you see, you see a bunch of brown people holding a bunch of melanin deficient kids yes you know pushing them around yes. and and stuff and and so you know, i have to stop myself because that's you know i can easily make that inference as well yeah yeah. you I'm, know I'm, which is wrong yeah it's wrong i'm wrong you know for saying but it, it's, you know, it's thinking it. but it's common and so that would not be so out of place hmm. 
you know, to yeah. know that this family has a nanny and they, yes. you know, take them out or whatever. And it's part, so I have to wrestle with that. Because a lot of that, some of that pisses me off. Yeah. You know, and it's like, man, this woman is taking time away from her family to raise your family. Yeah. You know, but like you said, it's a job. It's a job. It's a job. Probably a decent paying job, too. Yeah. You know. And that job has been uh, around for years. Like, I remember every, you know, time, even mom, you know, working and, and being a house uh, nurse. And mm-hmm. It's a job. It's, it's yeah. it, it puts food on your table somewhere and it gives somebody an opportunity. And it, um, But it is a wrestle for yeah. me, too. I wrestle with it a lot. You, I look at it and go, what the fuck? You know what pisses me off? Yeah. Seeing... And this is the, this is like the uh, the part racist that I can be at times to mm-hmm. see a black guy shining shoes, to see a black guy shining a white guy shoe. Mm. That just like that it like hits me in a I don't what it is I don't yeah, know I don't why know. I, don't know. I guess maybe it's like the whole like I'm at your feet type thing, mm-hmm. you, you know. And it just it it bothers the shit out of me. And I remember I yelled at a dude when I was uh, it was uh, St. Louis Airport mm. one time. It was a long time ago. I was in St. Louis Airport and there was this. You know, my guy getting his shoe shine. And mm-hmm. Black guy shining his shoe. And I just walked by, and I I can't remember what I said, but mm. it was something to the effect of, yeah, feel good having a black dude at your feet, doesn't it? And something like that, and just, like, and then just walked off. Or something like that. It just, it, yeah. It, and I don't even think they heard me, to be honest with you. Like, I said it, like, like maybe I just said it in my head, or whatever. Right. I get you. I get it. But I just know, and I know it's just something that it, it just pisses me off. But now, if you talk to that dude, I've been shining shoes for 30 yeah, years. Yeah, he's been shining shoes forever. And there's some guys who, who've who made a decent dollar doing that. And can tell you some you stories. Know? Yeah. Can, can tell you some... Uh, I wiped vomit off of Robert De Niro's shoe before he was ooh. hooking messing with this hooker. Ooh. On, uh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Um, it is a good feeling, though. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but getting your shoe shine is very... Um, It has that feeling. Yeah? Yeah. Feeling it's of, a dopamine. Uh, it's a dopamine. Feeling of uh, you feel better, you feel good, you feel like uh, you're important? Yeah. Okay. It's a dopamine. Okay, uh, I, 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 you, know, you don't get shoe I've shine. never gotten a shoe shot. Man. It's, never it's, gotten a shoe it's shot. It's a nice $5. It's a, it's a great $5. It, if, <clears throat> how can I say it? If you're having a, if you're about to go into a shitty day, like mm-hmm. you know that this is some shit going on, blah, 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 this and that, right? And there's a lot you got to do. I will, me, I will go into Penn Station, mm-hmm. go to the, uh, Soul Man, which mm-hmm. is right there, which is probably one of the best, if not, that that place is awesome. They fix your fucking shoes. I brought he, my wife's heels there, put tacks on. They're fucking awesome. Penn Station or in Grand Central? Penn Station. Penn Station. Penn Station. Soul I Man. Seen. I know there's one in Grand Central. There's one everywhere. Like, there's, I know, there's, yeah, yes, there, there is. When you start looking for it, they, 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 uh, there's, yes. there's a shoe shop. I've never noticed, I've never noticed one in Penn Station. There's a shoe shop on every block. I've never 30, noticed this. In the 30s? In yes, 30s there 40s, is that. Yes. There's a shoe there shop is. in every block. Uh, because most people walk in Manhattan. Yeah. You know, I yeah. I didn't think of this until my buddy told me. And he was like, oh, people walk all day here and their shoes. People walk all yeah. day and they buy they buy expensive shoes and they just get them like resold or yeah. stuff like that. They don't buy like new shoes. That shoot over and over and over no. again. I, so I had a, an Italian pair of shoes. And I brought them. To, I didn't think my... Same guy told me, he says, take up the shoemaker. Take mm-hmm. We don't cobble it. We, yeah. we don't do that. Like, we just buy new shoes. And I took a pair of uh, shoes that I had to this to this old man. Mm-hmm. The guy, and he put some uh, a new sole on the bottom. Okay. Okay. What a fucking difference. He put a bad, for a nice soul mm-hmm. that was like I was like fucking Steph Curry out Ooh. there. I was like, ooh, Penn Station dipping, dipping, what, 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 cutting corners, turning mm-hmm. left. Ooh, look at that sharp left. <laughs> yeah, it was more grip, more. He and he, he's one of those guys. And he's fucking blind as a bat. He, he's really, like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he's got these big goggles on, and he's like, ah, oh, this is a plastic shoe. Hey, right, you can't do nothing with this. This is Chinese you know, plastic mm-hmm. shoes. I had a pair of shoes that were. Cheap, cheap you know, shoes. Yeah. They look, and he was like, "This is a plastic shoe. You can't do nothing. This, this is not a shoe. This is plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a shoe." No, I said, "It's how can it not be a shoe? I'm fucking wearing it. Or it's garbage." He said, "This is garbage shoes. Like he doesn't like the cheap. He likes mm-hmm. real shoes, sewn, woven, sewn leather, leather, bound leather. Yeah, like that. he's a real fucking shoemaker." And I was like, 
This guy fucking a shoe embarrassed me. <laughs> I felt so ashamed that uh-huh. I had a plastic Chinese shoe that he couldn't fix. And he was like, you can't do nothing with it. This is... Like I had a GMO shoe. Yeah. Like it was like a <laughs> genetically modified shoe. <laughs> so nothing I can do with this shoe. This is it. Nothing you can do no. with it. He was like, this is not leather. This is plastic. This is, so I'm putting leather heel conditioner and healing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't heal. It's, it's not going to do anything. It's plastic. Oh, it's okay. a photo finish. Like it's a... a, a like a, a a laminate or what I don't right. know. It, when you get those um what is it the the, the patent leather type yeah. things, yeah. A fake <clears> shoe? <throat> oh we could make fake shoes. Oh hey. Took a took a blonde <laughs> guy to tell you. Yeah. yeah, and I'm looking at him like this so, are you fuck. sure are you, you, fuck? you know yeah. what the fuck you talking about? Can yeah. you even see this damn shoe? I and I think he's um he may be legally blind. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure he's legally blind. But but he's such a savant in his yeah. You know, he smells people's feet all day. Um, he's got to be fucking... You figure he got a... He's got a nick for the knack. Some, uh, something stays with him. But getting your shoe shine is... I think it's the... Uh, I think it's the... Uh, la, uh, the elevation. Position. Yes, the elevation. The elevation of it. You're up. You're sitting up. Someone's I've at your feet. I've been tempted to do that. I've been tempted to do that. I've never gotten my shoe shine. Oh, my goodness. I've been tempted to get my really? shoe shine. Yeah, I've never had it. Never, never gotten a shoe shine. Oh, man. And then if you if you, you want to really feel snobby, you open a paper, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> it takes what three minutes? Three, if that, you know, if, if that. What do you? What do you? What can you? I'm yeah. looking at my phone. Like most of the guys most now gonna be looking at their phone, are on yes. their phone, right? Mm-hmm. Their their cell phone. But 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 it's a nice feeling of getting your shoe shine. Um, most of them are Latin Mexican. They're all Mexicans at La Barrios. Uh, okay, over there yeah. on. Uh, Penn Station, Penn Penn Station. Station. Mm-hmm. and they're quitty quick. <laughs> Yo, you know they mm-hmm. they call you. They, she looks, she see. Oh, you got brown shoes. Then they pull a brown kit out. They put right. the cream, the lotion, the fucking spray. It's a fucking nice feeling. All right. it, I I would equate it to a a, a dopamine. And you're dropping what? Ten bucks? Five dollars? Not even five bucks. Five, and you give them three. I okay. give. I usually yeah, ten. So you a give, ten. So you, you, can you can give, give five and give five. Them a ten. Sometimes I give five and five. Because mm-hmm. you got to pay the shoemaker, you got to pay him, the house, and then you tip. The house? Yes, you don't pay the person. You pay oh, the desk. Oh, okay. You go to the desk, one shine. Ah, oh, I see what you're saying. I see what He you're gets okay, the house okay, money. Okay. Like a barber shop. Well, no, not like a barber Not like a barber shop. You barber shop, you pay the barber. Right. You go to the front desk. With the, you okay. go see the, the blind oh. shoemaker. <laughs> and you just, I think it's like 3 or $4, something like that. It's, then you wind up giving the change to the, the person. And the, but here's the biggest problem, though. Uh-oh. So, <laughs> and again, this could be extremely racist or extremely just bad. When you get your shoe shined, right, mm-hmm. after you get off, and they, they they tap the bottom of your foot to let you know let it's done. Let you know that you're it's done. done. Okay. All right, tap the bottom of your foot. It's done. Oh, okay. Ah, you get up, you kind of, you sparkling. You walk over to the desk to pay, right? You turn around, there's 15 shoe shiners, mm-hmm. right? Or 10 of them down the row. And you can't remember which one just shined your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked up. <laughs> I gave the tip to the wrong guy one time. I, oh! I, I was like, here. He said, no, no I, 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 I'm not shining your shoes. I, I, and she's, and it was a girl that did mine. Totally. So you're racist and sexist. Pompous. Yeah, that's total, <laughs> total pompous act, total asshole move. Like a, you know. So have, so in other words, probably best to have a couple bucks on you to tip before you step down to give the yes. house the money. Yes. You know, yeah. it's kind of like going back. It's kind of like going like, like paying for your meal and then going back to the table yeah. to leave you tip. You should always uh, have a couple bucks ready to yeah. like drop your tip on the table yeah. before you leave. Oh, it just felt, it just feels weird. It's like one of those things where it's like, damn, I'm fucked up. I didn't even pay attention. I didn't even pay attention yeah. to the person that was paying attention to me. Yeah. And how fucking stupid, how uh, selfish are yeah. we that, you know, or, or how, so maybe like you said, it's that feeling of having someone beneath you mm-hmm. that you just don't even respect. And you didn't them. even acknowledge that person didn't even with a couple bucks. So it can, it does have a dopamine that gives you that little, 38 seconds of power mm. or leverage of someone. Mm. And it's just enough to make you go kick some ass at work. 
Enough to make you feel good. Yeah, you'll yourself. tip a chair over and you get it. Fuck you. Hey! Hey, what are you doing? Hey, I don't work for you. Hey. So what? Get the fuck out of get here. Get the fuck out of here. I thought you were supposed to have those spreadsheets done. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, man. Um, I may need a beer to just get the deer Ooh. off the dog. Ooh. Just, uh, just, Ooh. Just stay drunk. No, nah, I just gotta go to bed. I, I get some sleep. Um, All right. Well, we can call it. You know. No. Well. well, well wait, how long? Hey, you listen. Talk? If you wow. can't hang, a fucking an hour. You can, if you can't hang, if you gotta get it, you can get it. You if know? you can't hang, if you can't hang, don't you know no good? Don't you know no good? Don't you know no good? It ain't like you don't need no money, cause two broke podcasts yeah. be breaking the <laughs> shit in, <laughs> player. <laughs> get you some. Buy you some money. No. Um. Actually, this is. I mean, touch your money, bro. No, I know. It's It's trip money. (laughs) Hopefully, that's what it is. Yeah, it's from the trip and Western Union and all. You know, you know, you know, you know when you like watch a movie and then you pick up on something that you didn't see before. Mm. I was watching The Hangover. Yeah, the the, the great comedy. They really fucked up when they made that one. Number one, the one, yes, number one, the original one. Oh, pretty tough. Beginning of the movie where the Bradley Cooper character is at school taking uh, trip money from his kids (laughs) and then taking it out Uh, to go to Vegas. Yes. And I just, I didn't notice that the first time. So I'm sitting there, the movie's coming on. I'm like, oh, the, the hangover's on. I'll watch this while I'm, I'm doing some other shit for work on my <laughs> laptop and whatever. Oh, this is on. So I'll put it, you know, put the baby to sleep. Wife sleeps. Oh, this movie's on. Let me watch this. And I'm watching it. I'm like, this motherfucker took all these kids' money to go to Vegas. <laughs> I never noticed that. <laughs> That was classic. That was great. That was one of the things that made it funny to me. That's why when uh, when you talk about Phil, the Uh character was Phil, uh, that was one of the things where I was uh, trying to wrap my head around like the the characters, right? You got the Mm -hmm. the nerd, you know, the the, the, the position of characters. You have the strong man who's kind of, the the, like car- the alpha the guy, alpha like the, male like the, which was right. film which was right film. which was film but he had his own vice he right. had he was broke he was right. he was living a lie you know whatever I thought that was gonna come back it never came it back. never came and I realized that I yeah. said wait a minute is this like at some point you want to see a kid say hey yeah. so I never we we never went on this fucking trip <laughs> I did pay him I gave him the money <laughs> or some kid getting in trouble right somebody like, getting spanked by their mom you should have gave the envelope you spent the money on... <laughs> You spent it on drugs. Yeah, you bought vapes. <laughs> oh, oh, but it's always that scenario when you have like those guy movies. Like, I, and funny you say that. I watched uh, Wild Hogs, uh, mm. uh, Road Hog. What is it? Wild Hogs. John Travolta, Martin Lawrence, and uh, Wild Hogs. Yeah, and uh, what's that? Our man from Fargo, from William H Macy. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. He's another creased face guy. He's he got, is. He's got a lot of creases in his, a lot of folds and envelopes. Have you ever face. you ever seen him in his show? Um, uh, Shameless. Yes, I saw one episode and was blown away. It's fucking hilarious. It's it's, it's hilarious. Wrong. It is it is beautiful. All it's at the same witty, time. wordy, yes. and very well. Come on, <laughs> why didn't you? <laughs> he's got that? Well, why didn't you know? <laughs> oh, he's funny. He he he's a character. Um. But yeah, man, um, lots of, lots of, uh, I've watched, like I said, I watched The Hunters, mm-hmm. um, I'm at the last episode, uh, which is 10, Netflix released the whole thing, so you could kind of like, I mean, I'm sorry, Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. Amazon Prime or? Prime, it's on Amazon, it's an Amazon movie. Okay. They're, they're doing a lot now. They're getting, yeah, they're, they're, they're catching stepping up. up. They're catching they're up. They're stepping it up. They're stepping up to Netflix, like. Yeah. All right, we got the content. Can you watch the whole, uh, can you watch all 10 episodes? Yes. Yes. And, and, and so when it first came out, all yes. 10 episodes were available. Yes. Okay. When it came out, it was released all 10, and you watch them all, like, like Luke okay. Cage and whenever they okay. came out. So they you, were, can, they you can binge blow. it. Yeah, so you, you can, can binge, binge it. You can binge it when it first comes out. Yes. Okay. And so what I don't like about that is that people tell you shit. Like, the guy at the yeah. job, he's like, oh, man, I finished. You got to wait till the, oh. Fuck, yeah, man. I'm on episode three. I'm on three, but yeah. Oh so don't, shit, I just so don't blow it, it for yeah. me. Yeah. So it does have that spoiler of, uh, alert no. effect. The only, the only, the only thing I got going uh, is um, I'm into the next season of Better Call Saul. Mm. Okay. Which that started. The, which is the Breaking Bad spinoff. Yeah. Yeah. Season five. Is my man in it Giancarlo? That's him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. Uh, showing how devious he is mm. and whatnot. 
I saw the uh, the photo for it, and I was like, oh, Johnny keeps talking about this. I never got into it. But I never watched Breaking Bad either, so it's one of those. I didn't see that either. Yeah, I think you'd, you'd like Breaking Bad. Yeah, I, I, I saw a fan-made movie. I didn't know this. I think we talked about it before. I, I, I saw a fan-made movie of Breaking Bad. Okay. And I did not know that. I thought it said Breaking Bad the movie, so mm-hmm. I watched Breaking Bad the movie. It was two hours of... Basically just clips, or... They chopped the... the they chopped the they, story. Yeah, and okay. made it a, a, a movie that played continuously. Now, for me, I've never saw it. it I, I, th- I thought that was it. You thought that was it. Yeah. So when people talk to me about Breaking Bad, I know what happened. And I know mm-hmm. the story, the premise, the meth lab, the, mm-hmm. you know, all that. But but they, certain particulars, you're not... Yeah, the, I don't know the characters in between, yeah. like Saul, <laughs> and them. they show him once or twice in the thing. In just at that chicken place or pollo yeah. loco or whatever, los pollos hermanos. Los pollos hermanos, but there's but it, it plays like a movie in two hours. So I got the uh, the the cliff notes. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it's like a cliff note. Um, boom, 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 yeah. Boom. So um, man, just say it. Mm-hmm. Two Bus Podcast it. episode ninety five. Dot. I don't know about you guys, but we're having a great ride here. And we we talked about people with consistency and really trying to, you know, every entrepreneur will tell you that consistency is the key. Mm-hmm. And I don't know any other podcast that's been as consistent as Two Bros Podcasts. Not many. I see you guys stopping at three, four. You 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 we you get on Anchor and you you know we gave you the tool. We told you go to Anchor. It's the best place to put your podcast. Mm-hmm. The the open forum platform the easiest way we've gone all through feed burner and and all these other mm. ways to try to uh, get a podcast distributed but i don't know any other place easier quicker and more efficient than anchor i agree and i shout these guys out i really like i really like their service um it is it has given us an opportunity in a platform yes it has allowed the world all eight of you <laughs> <laughs> To be a part of be a part of dream. it. Arms are open. Arms open wide. Group hug, everybody. Group hug. Oh. Oh. And fuck you guys who keep saying we're trying to be like Jesus and Meryl. Who said you keep saying that? Nah, you keep posting. I see. Oh yeah, I'm trying to be like Jesus and Meryl. We're nothing like the fucking. No, we're nothing like Jesus, Jesus and Meryl. First of all, Jesus and Meryl making look significantly more money. More money than we are. They cash us some big checks. And they cash us. Some they nice cash checks. Some... We like Jesus. We and like Meryl. these. Yeah, don't, we have don't nothing get against them. Love Jesus and Meryl. Love but it. we're not they're about as, as They're about as real as she can get. Yeah. But we're not Jesus and Meryl. We're, we're trying to do our own thing. We're doing our own thing. We're trying to do our yeah. own thing. So David Letterman, we need your help. Ooh. The big beard. Ooh. Did you see him on Jesus and Meryl? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Pretty yeah. badass. Uh, pretty badass. But anyway, Two Bros Podcast, episode 95. I'll say dot again. We're out of here. Yeah. That's what they said. Hello.